JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 15th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, hey, the US dollar tra uh, the US dollar reversed south uh, against uh, all but one of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during uh, the Asian morning Wednesday. It lost the most ground versus SEC, NOC, the Aussie and the Euro, while it decked out some gains only against the Japanese yen. The fact that the Aussie was among the main gainers combined with the weakness in the dollar and the yen suggests that the risk appetite rebounded again at some point uh, yesterday. Although most uh, EU indices uh, traded in negative waters, perhaps following the new lockdown measures in California and the fresh tensions between the US and China, all three of Wall Street's main indices rebounded, gaining on average around 1.5%. The relative optimism rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Although China's Shanghai Composite slid 0.33%, Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOS KOSPI gained 0. Point, uh, gained 1.52, 0. 0.11, and 0. 0.86 uh, percent uh, respectively. In our view, there was no clear catalyst behind the rebound during the U.S. session. Perhaps investors saw Monday's slide as an opportunity to buy again at lower levels. In any case, the frequent uh, up and downs in the markets add more credence to our view of staying sidelined until the fog clears out. As we noted in the past, it seems that there is a battle between those who believe that uh, due to the better than expected data, the global economy is likely to rebound faster than previously thought, and those who are afraid over a second round of, uh, a second round of restrictions and thereby a second hit to the, to the economic activity. During the Asian uh, morning today, we also had a Bank of Japan decision. As was widely expected, the bank kept its uh, short-term interest rates at uh, minus 0.1% and the target of its 10-year Japanese government bond yield uh, to at around uh, 0%. In the statement, officials noted that they remain ready to take additional easing steps without hesitation if deemed, ne if deemed necessary also adding that the domestic economy is likely to start improving gradually in the second half of the year. In their quarterly report, they said that the risks uh, to the economic and price outlooks are uh, skewed to, to the downside and that inflation expectations are hovering on a weak note. As we have been expecting, the yen did not uh, react to the decision, perhaps as it stays mostly linked to, development, to developments surrounding the broader investor morale. As uh, for later today, apart from headlines and developments surrounding the overall market sentiment, cut traders may also pay attention to the Bank of Canada monetary policy decision. At its most recent meeting, this bank decided to keep interest rates unchanged and said that given the improvement in short-term funding conditions, it reduced the frequency of its term rep operations and its program to purchase bankers' acceptances. Officials also said that the Canadian economy appears to have avoided the most severe scenario presented in the bank's April monetary policy report and that the economy is expected to resume to growth in the third quarter. That said, despite last week's uh, better-than-expected employment report, inflation remains very low with the headline rate at minus 0.4% year-over-year. Therefore, with the bank also publishing its updated economic projections, it would be interesting to see what officials' plans are moving forward, even if they are not expected to act uh, this time around. Two currencies that tend to be very responsive to changes in uh, the broader investor morale are the Kiwi and the Aussie. 
However, tonight traders of those risk-linked currencies may also pay attention to New Zealand's CPI for the second quarter as well as Australia's employment uh, data for June. Kicking off with New Zealand CPI, the forecast uh, suggests uh, that inflation slowed to 0.4% quarter over quarter from 0.8%, something that will drive the year over year rate down to 2.1% from 2.5%. At its most recent gathering, the RBNZ decided uh, to keep interest rates and its large scale asset purchase program unchanged with officials noting that their nation has contained the spread of the virus, enabling an earlier resumption of economic activity than assumed in, uh, than assumed in May. However, they highlighted uh, that the appreciation of their local currency has placed further pressure on exports and that the balance of economic risks remains to the downside, adding that they remain willing to ease their policy further if deemed necessary. Despite expectations over a slowdown, the year-over-year -year CPI rate is expected to stay near the midpoint of the RBNZ's 1-3% to target range and also well above the bank's own forecast for the quarter, which is at 1.3%. This may allow RBNZ policymakers to stand pat for another meeting, but with the QE slightly higher against the dollar than it was uh, the last time they met, we also expect them to reiterate concerns over its, over its appreciation as well as their readiness to ease further if needed. Passing the ball to Australia's data, the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 7% from 7.1%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 100,000 jobs, less than the 227.7 thousand uh, loss in May. That said, the participation uh, rate is expected uh, to to have increased uh, to 63.7% from 62.9%, which combined with a slide in the unemployment rate suggests that people who have joined the labor force may have actually found a job. This means that the employment change may come in positive this time around, thus we would consider the risks as tilted to the upside. And this unemployment report may allow the RBA to avoid scaling back uh, up its QE purchases although we expect them to stay willing to do so if things uh, fall out of orbit. The risk uh, to that view is expanding QE purchases in light of the newly adopted lockdown measures in Melbourne. However, we believe that policymakers may prefer to wait for data to reveal whether this had a serious, a serious economic impact or not. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the early European morning, we already got uh, the UK CPIs for June. The headline rate ticked up to 0.6% year-over-year year from 0.5% instead of uh, sliding to 0.4% as the forecast suggested, while the core rate rose to 1.4% year-over-year from 1.2%. The forecast was for the core rate to stay unchanged. Later from the US, we have the industrial production for June, which is anticipated to have accelerated to plus 4.3% year-over-year from 1.4%. The Energy Formation Administration weekly report on crude oil inventories for last week is also due to be released. The forecast is for a 2.098 million barrels decline after a 5.654 million inventory built the week before. That said, bearing in mind that the American Petroleum Institute's report yesterday revealed an, uh, an 8.322 uh, million slide, we would consider the risks surrounding the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted to the downside. Tonight, during the Asian Morning Thursday, apart from New Zealand's CPI and Australia's employment report, we also get China's uh, GDP for the second quarter, alongside the fixed asset investment, industrial production and retail sales all for June. Chinese economic activity is expected to have rebounded 9.6% quarter over quarter after contracting 9.8% in the first quarter, while fixed asset investment, industrial production and retail sales are all expected to have improved in June. Following the containment of the coronavirus in China during the second quarter, this will not come as a surprise to us and perhaps neither to any other market participant. We believe that investors will be more eager to find out uh, how the world's uh, second largest economy has been performing in the third quarter after the second, out after the second outbreak of the virus. Thus, we don't expect this set of data to prove, to prove determinant with regards to the broader market sentiment. 
Now, besides um, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff uh, McClam, who will hold a press conference after his bank's decision, we also have two more speakers on the agenda. Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee member Silvana Denreiro and Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.